it's more emotional for me to talk about because I see, I see a, um, I see our future. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a Q&A. We're going to sit down and answer your questions. I've had a lot going on in my life lately and I've been getting a ton of questions over on Instagram. So I thought it'd be really good to film one of these videos and just kind of have like a chit chat with you guys. I typically share weekly Q&As over in my Instagram stories, but for this week I thought we would just actually film it. I haven't filmed an updated Q&A on my YouTube channel for quite some time and I think this is just a great way for me to connect with you guys. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. First question, how did you start getting a bigger following on YouTube and any suggestions for those starting? So YouTube was much easier to grow in my opinion when I first started five years ago. I had a couple of videos blow up and take off over my like first two years and I feel like that is really what grew. I hate to say it, but honestly, I think it's luck at some point. Um, there's only so much you can do with an algorithm. There's of course things you can do like adding the correct tags and making sure your titles are captivating and your thumbnails are captivating and you know making people want to click on your videos. So there are things you can do. But for the most part, I think it's just luck. When it comes to an algorithm, you just you honestly don't know. For anybody just starting out, patience, consistency. Consistency is honestly key. I'm seeing a lot of questions about Ty and I's divorce and how we like worked things out and got back together. And we've filmed a dedicated QA about all of those questions so I'm gonna link that below if you have any questions in regards to our relationship or how our divorce and remarriage went about I'm gonna leave that video below if somebody says do you ever get annoyed that Ty plays video games or does he ever play too much so this is actually a really interesting topic because I just shared over on my Instagram stories um, like Ty was gaming and I like, took a video of him because Indy was sitting on top of him it was really cute um, and I got a lot of questions about this a lot of questions about women who husbands play games and they get really frustrated and you know they don't want them to play video games and I just have to say I get it I've been there um, we've definitely had our struggles and it definitely has been an issue in the past and when I say in the past I mean like years ago uh, I think what is really, really important for me to understand is that that's something he enjoys and that is a way that he socializes and connects with his friends and his family. He plays with his cousins and it's something he really enjoys doing and I think as his wife, I should support that. The issue is when it becomes too much. It's all about balance. It's all about communication. If you feel like your husband's playing video games too much, then you just need to have that conversation with them and set up strict expectations. So I fully support Ty and his gaming because it doesn't interfere between our relationship or between parenting. And it's a great way for him to connect with his cousins and his family and his friends uh, back in Kansas, which is where we're from. Knowing what you do now with IVF, would you recommend the naturopath, IUI clinic, and do you wish you would have done something differently on this journey? So yeah, I'd 100% recommend the naturopath that I went to, they were wonderful women. Um, it just wasn't the right fit for me. I needed more medical intervention. I needed more medication. There is limitations of what naturopath fertility clinics can do. And like they couldn't do IVF. And for my diagnosis, we had to do IVF. So um, there was limitations. But yes, I'd 100% recommend them if it is right for your diagnosis. In regards to what I would have done differently, uh, yes, I think I would have gone to a fertility clinic sooner and I feel like a lot of women say this when they're going through infertility and get asked this question but instead of seeing my OB for so long I wish I would have made an appointment with my fertility clinic sooner I think I wasted some valuable time with my OB she's wonderful don't get me wrong but again limitations to what um, she can do in regards to helping our diagnosis are you all still going to Italy since baby is coming so we're not pregnant yet <laughs> baby's not coming yet hopefully soon, but yes, we are 100% still planning on traveling as long as our doctor says it's okay. Obviously, if our doctor advises against it, we won't go. I mean, if we have a healthy pregnancy, I should be, I don't know, like six months along or so, which I think personally it'd be a great time to go. So we're really hoping we can still go. We're planning on it, but again, if something happens or if we have like a high-risk pregnancy or if it's not safe for us to travel, we won't. But we are planning on going to Italy with some friends in the summer for my 30th birthday and it would be just like a wonderful last thing to do like Ty and I before, you know, life gets busy again with a new baby and 
um, all of that. So I'm really hoping we can make it work. But again, if we can't go, we can't go. How long ago did you start the process of IVF? So we started the IVF process, uh, I don't even know, fall, um, I wanna say September. There's a lot of testing and things you have to do in order to even get on the IVF calendar. So um, I would say as soon as we met with our fertility doctor, which I think was September, we got the ball rolling. We've been trying to conceive for, I don't even know, 16 months, something like that. Um, the past like, I don't know, six months have been medicated, controlled. Um, so naturally we haven't really been able to try. Like right now I'm on birth control, which I know it sounds crazy, but it's just what you do in the fertility world, especially when you are prepping for like a transfer for us, a frozen embry embryo transfer. Lots of questions asking when we're doing our embryo transfer and we have our appointment tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, our appointment's on Thursday. So I'm really hoping we have an idea of what that's gonna look like. I don't know what to expect. I'm sure it's gonna be six, eight weeks out from here I don't know I really have no idea so we'll find out hopefully tomorrow you have any regrets posting on so much of your fertility struggles going through the same okay first of all so sorry you're also experiencing infertility it is quite the journey and I think for me overall I don't have any regrets but I think the hardest thing to deal with is whenever you make a decision in regards to infertility publicly online there's always those people who come out and almost judge you for the decision you've made when they don't quite understand why you've made the decision you've made. First of all, it's really hard to make decisions in regards to infertility. There's so many decisions you have to make, especially in regards to IVF. And those decisions are very well thought out between Ty and I, and we are confident with our decisions. And when I publicly share our decisions, it's always hard when people come at you and question why you're doing what you're doing when you've already taken the time to process and think and decide what is right for you and your family. And so I think that is definitely the hardest part about being so open about my infertility struggles. But I also find it very empowering to um, be confident in the decisions that we're making because I know we're not the only one making these decisions and I know there's a lot of women out there struggling with the decisions that they're making. and. It's very empowering when you feel confident about what you're doing. I definitely hope that makes sense and you guys understand what I'm saying, but in my opinion, there is no wrong decision when it comes to infertility. Whatever decision is right between you and your spouse and your doctor, that is the right decision. And I think what can be misunderstood in regards to infertility and like my situation in general is that um, there's a reason for everything that we're doing and we're not just like making random decisions to make random decisions. There's always a reason behind it and it can be exhausting to kind of have to explain yourself all the time. But like I said, in a way it's also empowering because this is such a taboo topic and the more I can educate and the more I can share makes me personally feel better. It is a way for me to cope through infertility is to help educate others and um, not feel so alone. If you moved, would you ever consider building your next house? Um, absolutely, we would love to build. I don't know if I want to build here in like the Phoenix area. I just feel like if I was to ever build like a dream house or something, it would be on more land. The one thing I don't love about where we live I mean, this is just Phoenix in general. The houses are so close together and I would love to just have some more space. I love having neighbors, but having some more yard and just um, some more space would be really nice. So if we ever build, that is more of what we'd want to do. Does Scarlett understand about the fertility process? How did you explain it to her? So yeah, we've been very open with her. She's a very curious child. She loved like being a part of the injections and like watching Ty, you know, give them to me. And we've explained that not everybody has to do this. And if she has a baby someday, she might not have to do this, but some women have to, and this is just the reality of what's going on. So we've been trying to educate her as, um, as much as we can you know, as, as much as her five-year-old brain can process. We didn't feel like it was something that needed to be hidden from her. It is a very um, common thing these days and she might have to go through it someday too. And um, with my diagnosis, it can be genetic. And so I, you know, I wanna help educate her from an early age. However, now that we have healthy embryos and like we know the genders and everything, we are holding back that information to share that with her. Um, it's not like she asks about this a lot either, but we're just not actually going to talk about this with her unless she asks. 
um, until we are successfully pregnant. So she doesn't know the gender of the embryo. Like that information is just probably too much for her to process. So we share little bits and pieces with her when it makes sense, but not too much to like overwhelm her or stress her out or anything like that. Any future sports you want Scarlett to try or do. So we're starting soccer, which I think she is gonna be so good. Um, she loved running club and running club is over and so we thought soccer might be a really good option for her. We've tried dance, we've tried gymnastics and I would have loved for her to like be in gymnastics and tumbling and all of that but she just wasn't really into it. She needs more of a, not that gymnastics isn't competitive because it is, but she needs more of like a, a fast paced um, like super competitive type of environment. That is what she thrives in and I think that's why running was so good for her because she was so competitive and just loved it. So I think soccer is gonna be pretty good for her too. When can we expect the gender reveal? Can't wait and congratulations. Thank you so much and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. I am kind of torn on this whole gender reveal because it's just not how I envisioned sharing um, this personal information online. So part of me is like, I feel a little weird like announcing the genders of our embryos that aren't even like, I'm not even pregnant, um, so it just, it seems a little weird to me. On the other hand, I'm very excited, and we're a very non-traditional family. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, and this is definitely exciting news for us. I think we should celebrate any milestone, any exciting news that we can share, because, you know, life is too short not to celebrate. And so another part of me is like, you know, we're just gonna talk about it. We're gonna share all of our family knows now. So I don't have that answer yet. When it feels right to share, we will share. Um, but I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like I know everybody wants to know and like I wanna share, but it's just like, we're not even pregnant yet. What are some ways you've grown as a person through the IVF process? Oh my gosh. In the past year, I feel like I have grown so much. Um, so much. I feel stronger now than I ever have. I think infertility is one of the hardest things you will ever go through as a woman, but it can also be a very empowering time in your life. You feel like superwoman. I've said this before over on Instagram, as crappy as it is to have to go through infertility and um, you know have to, to go through IVF just to get your baby, IVF is also an extreme privilege and not everybody gets to go through it. Not everybody has access to IVF. Not everybody has the funds to pay for IVF. Not everybody has the mental capacity to go through IVF. IVF is a privilege and it is a cool freaking process. Like as, as hard as it is to go through mentally, physically, emotionally, IVF is so freaking cool. I have friends who have kids who are IVF babies and I have a different respect for those families now. I look at Scarlett's friends who I knew were IVF babies and it is incredible. You don't truly understand infertility or IVF until you've been through it. How are you planning to save for Scarlett's college? We use a program called Backer, which I've actually shared on my channel before. We have a 529 set up for her. So that is how we save for her. It's an awesome program, by the way. If you haven't heard of Backer, highly recommend checking them out. What is your favorite meal to cook? Uh, we have a couple like go-to meals, lasagna, enchiladas, um, like some kind of soup, like a chili or a white chicken chili. Um, our hobo packet dinners, which is like hamburger and potatoes and carrots and onion. And then we love recreating like chipotle bowls. I have a couple questions asking about our low mosaic embryo and if we would consider you know transferring it just a little story here we had four embryos tested like genetically tested for chromosomal abnormalities and two came back genetically normal one's low mosaic and one's aneuploid the aneuploid embryos are not viable those embryos would probably not implant and if they did implant they would probably miscarry so that embryo is not viable our low mosaic embryo is also not viable. Um, it depends on the chromosome affected. So low mosaics are a very complex embryo. Depending on the, the level of your low mosaic embryo, it may be an option to use, and that's a conversation you need to have with your doctor because it really just depends case to case. In our situation, our low mosaic would not be a viable embryo to transfer, so it's not even an option. So hopefully that clears that up. We have two healthy embryos that are an option to transfer. We'll be transferring one embryo at a time 
if my body is not ready for pregnancy with our first transfer, hopefully it will be for our second. So this gives us two chances to achieve pregnancy through our IVF cycle. Okay, this is a great question. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give yourself before the divorce? Um, she says her husband and her are struggling and she doesn't know how she can go up from here. She said, she said, I know you've said divorce made you guys stronger, but I'm curious to know if there's anything you wish you would have done or changed or anything like that. Love you guys and so happy for your growing family. Thank you. This is an awesome question. And I'm so sorry that you are struggling in your marriage. Marriage is really hard. And I honestly never know how to answer these questions because what healed Ty and I was time. Time apart, um, time separated, seeing what life was like without each other. Uh, living apart. I mean, we lived apart for a year. We lived separately for a year. We co-parented for a year. I think you dig yourself into this hole when you are going through marriage struggles where every little thing will set you off um, or set your spouse off. And now we just laugh about it or we joke about it. Like if we have a disagreement, it lasts maybe like, I don't know, an hour or something. And we just laugh about it. And so I feel like if we could go back I would tell us to just lighten up and not take things so seriously and don't stay mad at dumb things that aren't really that big of a deal. And so I wish I could have told myself back then. I feel like I personally had unrealistic expectations of what I needed from Ty. I had my own issues. He had his own issues. Like we just were not meshing and we just were not um, working together as a team. We were not communicating. We were two separate people living together. We were not one, like we were not working together as one. And I feel like if I could go back in time, I would just tell myself to lighten up. <laughs> Our marriage is fun now. We have fun, uh, we laugh. And this has always been a huge part of what I've wanted in a relationship. I just, I wanna have fun. And I truly feel like Ty is my best friend. It's taken a long time for us to get to this point. And as hard as it is to hear, our divorce is truly what saved our marriage. How's Ty's running training been going? What's the next race he wants to attempt? Um, he's actually not running right. I mean, he runs, he like ran four miles last night, but he's not training for running. He is training to bulk. <laughs> so totally different now um, he's lifting more and running less. Does early menopause run in your family? So intrigued to know how your body has entered into that stage so early on. I am too, because it does not. My mom hasn't even hit menopause yet. I have no idea. I don't know if it's environmental factors. I don't know. I, I've learned so much about like toxicity and um, you know, starting Lollico and learning about all of these toxic ingredients that are commonly found in children's products. Um, it has definitely been eye-opening to a whole other world of, um, you know, toxic products that I've been exposed to. Who actually knows? But um, it is something that I am glad that I'm aware of because having a daughter myself, because it is something that could potentially, you know, affect her as well. So, um, you know, if she wants to have children someday, which I hope she does because I want to be a grandma, <laughs> um, I am going to encourage her to, you know, just stay on top of her fertility. Somebody asks if the genetic testing that we did on the embryos, if it means we can roll out the risk of hip dysplasia. So no, it doesn't. It doesn't test for those kind of things. PGT, A testing, um, it tests for chromosomal abnormalities. So hip dysplasia can be, you know, genetically passed down. It's most common in girls. There's other things that can cause hip dysplasia as well. I'm really hoping our next child doesn't have hip dysplasia, but no, PGT testing does not uh, test for things like that. For us, the entire point of doing PGT testing was to um, help us be as successful as possible with our pregnancy. Most of the time, miscarriages are caused by embryos that are chromosomally abnormal, and I have been through a miscarriage before, and it is incredibly hard to go through. And you know, when we have the option to rule, not necessarily rule things out, because there's no guarantee with any of this, but um, to decrease our odds of having a miscarriage, it's a no-brainer to us, we're gonna do that. Everybody wants to know about twins. How would we feel if we had twins? Um, I've said this before, the only way we would have twins is if our embryo splits once it's transferred into my uterus. We would be ecstatic, we'd be very excited. If it naturally happens, we would be excited. We are not going to force twins upon us. Everybody's very concerned about our second embryo if our first one takes two, and I appreciate the concern about our <laughs> embryos. If our first embryo takes and turns into a pregnancy, our second embryo will be frozen. Will your shampoo brand ever make it to Target or Whole Foods? How hard is it to take your product on the shelf? 
in my opinion, the kids stuff they sell are not good at Target. Um, I agree, <laughs> I totally agree, which is why we created Lollico. It is my dream to see our products in Target. I would love to see Lollico in Target and maybe someday, we're still very new. Um, our first goal is to get on Amazon actually, so hopefully coming this year. But right now, our main focus is just to build up our products. We are trying to get um, new products brought to Lollico and then we'll work on maybe some new scents and then hopefully, you know, like a five-year plan, maybe we will be in a store. I don't know. Um, we will see, but we are still a very, very, very new business. So we are not even six months old yet, but um, we do have four products out and about to launch our fifth, which is, I feel like that's pretty good. Having five products, I feel like that's pretty good. So it's all thanks to you guys, honestly. Every time you buy from Lollico, that money goes back into the business and we work on developing new products so thank you well you have to move to a new house because your family will be growing yay it's so excited for you sweetheart thank you so much um no we have a four bedroom house and we have plenty of room for we hope to be the four of us five if you count indy um we have plenty of space so each of the kids will have their own bedroom our fourth bedroom is used as Ty's office and um, I mean, we have a playroom too so somebody asks what changed you and your husband on having more kids so it's funny she asked this because I don't ever think we've really talked about it, but maybe I have, who knows. But um, there was a point in our marriage where I wanted more children and Ty did not. And it was definitely a struggle um, for me personally. And um, this was pre-divorce. This was, um, you know, when our marriage was really struggling and uh, it was definitely hard for me to envision not having more children. And I just don't think we were at a good place to even have that conversation but it was something that like was wearing so much on me and um, definitely like, played a factor into some of like the resentment I had towards our marriage. I mean, it obviously wasn't the only reason why we chose to separate, but um, it definitely was like a very important thing to me. Ty and I just had different views of what you know, our future was gonna look like. He had every right to feel those feelings and so did I. And so what is amazing is that, you know, we found our way back to each other and we have the same views now of what our family size is going to look like and what we see in our future and i can't believe i cannot believe that we have been trying for a baby like i never thought we would get here honestly so if you are struggling with this too hang in there i think what's so important is just to make sure you have a strong marriage and a strong foundation and we were lacking that but obviously ty wants another child now and um i obviously do too i always have and I think the hardest part for us is when we decided, okay, let's do this, like we're both ready and we kept trying and we kept trying and we couldn't get pregnant. I kept having a fear of like, what if he changes his mind and wants to give up? And um, I was also frustrated because I'm like, okay, we've waited so long to get to this point, to have a strong marriage, to have a solid foundation and to be able to bring another child into this world and we can't. And so that was a really, really hard pill for me to swallow and something I definitely had to overcome through the past year and a half of infertility. I feel like I'm getting off topic, but I just want to talk about this for a second because it, I do feel like, I do feel like our infertility has been, there's been blessings to it too. And I don't, I feel like that sounds kind of weird to say, but, um, Infertility has brought Ty and I closer together. It has made us want a baby more than anything. It has given us time, more time in our marriage and relationship to grow closer together. And as much as it sucked um, going through infertility, I, I just feel closer to him more than ever. And I wouldn't have wanted to do this with anybody else. The way he took care of me going through the egg retrieval and the way he was so uh, I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> the way he was so um, supportive through all of our injections and medication and um, I, I'm just grateful, beyond grateful for him and I'm grateful we've got to experience this together. And I think when we have a baby someday, we'll be able to look at this child and think, we fought for you. <laughs> we fought for this child. We did not give up. This baby was so loved and so wanted and um, <laughs> my gosh, it's more emotional for me to talk about because I see, I see a, um, I see our future 
knowing like our embryos and our genders of our embryos, like I see our future and it is um, very emotional for me to think about and talk about because I can just envision it now. Throughout this year and a half of going through infertility, it's been very hard to envision future. I don't, I didn't know what it would look like and um, the unpredictability can be really, really hard to uh, deal with through infertility. And now I feel like there's, there's a chance and there's hope and I can just envision a future. I know someday looking at this child, like it's gonna all be worth it. And everything we've done in our relationship, our marriage, our family, it, it is all worth it. And um, we're gonna go on to a new topic now because <laughs> I'm emotional. Last question, do you already have names picked for your babies? So girls names, we can't decide on anything. Boys name has been decided since I don't even know, years ago, because it is a family name. So girls names, we don't agree on anything. Boy's name is already set in stone. Anyways, that is going to conclude today's q and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I always personally love listening to Q&As, so hopefully you guys do too. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to stick around. Hit that red subscribe button down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs>